If you've got back pain or sciatica, are your tight hip flexors, or your tight hamstrings, or all of your other tight muscles making you feel like you're all tied up in knots? Help me. But stretching isn't doing anything. But people keep telling you, you need to release these muscles. Release them. Oh, he's really gotta release that psoas. I never thought I'd get out of there alive. Uh, well. I, I hate to break it to you, buddy. Well, let's unravel the truth so that you can actually reclaim the active life you deserve to live and heal from back pain and sciatica. So today's question is, do you need to stretch your tight muscles, fix your muscle imbalances, or correct your alignment? The short answer is no, and I'll prove it to you. Tight muscles, knots, and imbalances like lower cross syndrome, pelvic tilt, or a short leg are often blamed for low back pain, but in truth, they just don't matter very much. Now, sometimes for some people, it matters a little bit. However, most of the time, for most most people, worrying about this stuff actually makes things worse. So in this video, we're going to clear up the confusion by teaching you when should you do something about muscle tightness and when should you forget about it. And spoiler alert, it's almost never a big deal. Hey, I'm Dr. Anthony Davis and I empower people with chronic low back pain and sciatica to reclaim the active life they love using a holistic approach to rehab. Let's start off by defining a tight muscle. I want to make a distinction between something that feels tight and something that is physically, structurally not movable. So there's sensory tightness, and then there's structural tightness. And most of the time, sensations of tightness do not represent actual structural tightness. So let's say bending forward makes your back and your hamstrings feel tight. So you go to a massage therapist and they rub around and they feel it and they say, yep, your low back and your hamstrings are, they're ropey, they're so tight. And side note, the muscles of your back and your hamstrings are literally shaped like ropes. So they're always going to feel ropey. However, sometimes a muscle is literally, structurally, unable to stretch to a certain length. So we have two types of tightness sensory and structural. Now the sensations of tightness are nothing to worry about, right? Physical sensations often trick you. People frequently feel things that are not an accurate representation of reality. For example, a common symptom of a heart attack is jaw pain. Now there's nothing wrong with that person's jaw, but frankly, our nervous system is a little stupid sometimes. Or take phantom limb pain, where a person feels horrible pain in in a part of the body that doesn't even exist anymore. But let's look at some research. Now, this study showed that perceived tightness of a muscle does not correlate with pain. Then this study was expecting to see that muscles that felt tight would show increased electrical activity on an EMG. But even when muscles feel tight, they actually don't necessarily have an increased EMG activity. Besides this, extra flexibility isn't even beneficial in many cases. Like this review paper has a ton of references showing that less muscle tension, in other words, being more flexible, does not improve performance in sports or physically demanding jobs. The only time that someone really needs a ton of flexibility is if the activities that they do require a massive range of motion, like ballet or gymnastics. But for most people, feeling tightness doesn't really matter for pain or performance. Okay, okay, so then why did my massage therapist or chiropractor tell me that I've got the, the tightest low back they've ever felt in their life? Well, here are two studies showing that therapists cannot reliably feel tightness and trigger points with their hands. So your therapist might just be hallucinating. Unfortunately, our hands are just not reliable. But even if they're not hallucinating and it actually is tight, then it's still not necessarily an issue that needs to be fixed. But even if we wanted to fix it, stretching it might not be the answer anyway, because tight sensations are just a signal from your brain that something needs to change. Often, it's that your brain doesn't trust the area in question to have the strength to safely control 
pull the body through the range of motion. So instead of stretching, we should focus on improving the strength of your low back or hamstrings or any area that feels tight. Instead of stretching your hamstrings, for example, work up to being able to do a stiff-legged deadlift. Now, if you're not convinced, of course, let's look at some more research. So this study showed that muscle strength reduces injury risk to less than one third. But by comparison, stretching on its own did nothing to reduce injury risk. And that study showed that strength-based exercise helped chronic low back pain, while stretching had no impact. In fact, getting obsessed with becoming extremely flexible might just make your back pain worse. Uh, this study showed that hypermobility, being extra flexible, actually increases your risk of developing back pain. And this paper showed that athletes that have extra mobility have a higher risk of injury. Now, before all the yogis and foam rolling enthusiasts come at me in the comments, I am not saying that stretching and myofascial work is useless. For example, this paper showed that stretching can improve pain tolerance. So doing some stretching or mobility could be a good starting point for pain management, especially when you're in too much pain to be able to do any other form of exercise. The same goes for foam rolling. If it provides some temporary relief, no big deal. But these are a side dish to rehab. If they feel good, that's fine. But the main dish of your rehab should be education, strength, stress reduction, sleep, and nutrition. And by the way, if you've been told that lifting weights is gonna make your muscles tight, unless you stretch them out all the time, uh, that is a myth. For example, uh, this study showed that eccentric strength training is just as effective as static stretching at increasing hamstrings flexibility. And Interestingly, when you get more flexible, you are not literally making your muscles longer or less stiff. Most of the time, you're just improving pain tolerance. So the muscle is still literally stiff, but it doesn't feel stiff anymore. Pretty interesting. Now, flexibility still matters to an extent, and it depends on each individual and their goals. Like a gymnast or a dancer definitely needs a lot more flexibility than the average population, but even with Dancers, we see that if you are hypermobile relative to your peers, you are still at an increased risk of injury. Then on the other side, we've got sports like long distance running, where this study shows that being less flexible actually makes you a better, more efficient runner. So it really depends on your goal. But let's say that you live a quote unquote normal life and you've got a, you know, a full-time job, your main activities are like chasing the kids around the yard and doing yard work. Like how much mobility do you really need? Well, you should probably be able to get up and down off of the floor and play with your kids or squat down and pick up, uh, maybe it's your grandkids or your dogs. Um, but even if you don't have kids, you still need to squat down to pick up a heavy bag of groceries or the laundry, right? And if you don't have enough range of motion to do basic activities, like getting up and down off of the toilet without pain, that's a big deal. But where it gets weird is that changing muscle stiffness is not actually helpful most of the time. Why? Well, a feeling of stiffness might not be caused by actual stiffness. Most of the time, it's more weakness or pain or fear that's putting the parking brake on your body. So let's look at weakness first, right? You might just be out of shape because you haven't worked out in a long time. Maybe because you've been in pain so long, your muscles are just getting weaker and you aren't strong enough to control the full range of motion. Or it could be a lack of specific strength. Maybe you are strong in other ranges of motion, but you never train full range of motion. In either case, it's not a muscle length thing. It's that your brain doesn't trust that you have the strength and control to safely enter these positions. Now, real quick, I want to address, you know, people who love stretching but hate lifting weights. And you don't have to give up your favorite stretching. Now, it's true that large amounts of passive stretching and forcefully cranking your foot behind your head or just laying around in pigeon all day may lead to more uncontrolled flexibility and it might even increase your injury risk, but we can modify your favorite passive stretches to make them into strength stretches. For example, you could shapeshift a pigeon pose into a lifted 
hip strength pose by bringing the feet closer together and bringing the torso upright. So you don't have to become a bodybuilder or a power lifter. You just need to incorporate some strength elements into your normal routine. Now, the second reason for poor range of motion is pain. If you have back pain or sciatica, like squatting, bending forward, or even just putting on your socks might feel impossible due to pain. In these situations, we wanna move the injured area as much as possible without flaring up the pain. Don't stop moving. Find movements that don't hurt excessively, and a little pain is okay. For example, walk instead of running. Or if you're still working out, use way lighter weight and higher reps for a little while until you feel a little better. I mean, I've made workouts for my patients who are literally bedridden. You know, there's always something that you can do to get some kind of daily movement in. So if you're struggling to find the right exercises for you, do make sure to watch the masterclass. The link is always in the description of these videos. Now, the last cause of poor range of motion that I'm gonna cover today is fear. And this is especially common with the fear of spinal bending, right? Because a lot of people are telling you that it is dangerous to bend your spine. And so now you're constantly bracing your spine and moving like a robot. You're avoiding bending and lifting with a rounded back because you're terrified of damaging your spine. Now, this type of overprotective bracing can lead to all kinds of issues. So we need to remember, joints need to move and lack of movement increases pain. On top of that, fear of movement severely increases pain and disability. So if you're caught in that trap of being really overprotective, you need to get out of that. So you can start by introducing gentle, easy spinal motion into your day. Uh, cat cows or pelvic tilts are a good place to start. Basically, move your spine gently and prove to yourself that it actually feels safe to move. and It's not dangerous. Now, before we wrap up the video, I do want to make a quick caveat. Sometimes mobility issues are from a more serious condition like inflammatory arthritis. Now, I'm not talking about osteoarthritis, which in the spine we call degenerative disc disease. I'm talking about inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis. Okay, osteoarthritis, not a big deal. Things like rheumatoid or ankylosing spondylitis, those are different. If you have symptoms like you know, major joint swelling or redness, um, then the SPADE tool can be a good tool to evaluate. Uh, if you get a high score on that, that screening test, then go talk to your primary care provider. Uh, I'll link to that in the description. So let's wrap up, right? What do you do if you feel stiff and you don't like that feeling? First off, don't stress about it. Remember, fear of pain actually makes pain and disability worse. Second, sensory tightness doesn't usually mean structural limitations because pain and fear and weakness are more likely to be the issue. Third, ease your way into full range of motion strength exercises to prove to your body that you are in control of your range of motion. Fourth, Extra flexibility is pretty much useless unless you need it for something like gymnastics. And hypermobility increases your risk of injury. So stop trying to do contortionism. You don't need to. And lastly, incorporate mindfulness and peaceful breathing as you ease into exercise to prevent your nervous system into going into this overprotective muscle guarding state. Also, remember, everybody is asymmetrical. It usually doesn't matter. There are no magic muscles. Pain is multifactorial and requires a more integrated approach. And you are capable of recovering from back pain and sciatica and reclaiming the active life you deserve to be living. Now, if you came here and you were worried about tight muscles, well, we debunked that, thoroughly destroyed that myth. But you probably also think that, you know, certain positions or postures are bad for your spine. So if you want to absolutely destroy postural myths about back pain, uh, watch the next video that is appearing on your screen right now, and I'll see you there.